Hey guys, how you doing? This is Asamo here, and I got uh, Paul right here. Hey Paul, how you doing? Man? Doing good, brother. How's everybody doing out there tonight? Yeah, today is a Saturday night, and uh, see how y'all doing out there, huh? Well, this weekend we've had a whole weekend oh. of just praising God in our church. It's been 24 Amen. hours. It's been yeah. like six in the morning. So oh. Just it's still going on right now. It's still going on oh. since uh, Friday. Is it Friday though? Yeah, since Friday six a.m. Yeah, Friday. To, and it's still going right now. It's going to be going until tomorrow till ten o'clock tomorrow. Wow. So, so uh, we're just we're kind of uh, we're out there. We're in there. <laughs> we're about there. So, Amen. I think one of the Amen. things that we we had on our heart, brother, what did you have on our heart? What we should we well, we, we were praying. We were we were in the cross just now, just. To Praying and, and ask the Lord, what what does He want to speak about? And uh, you know, if He changes it, uh, it'll be His will. But uh, we felt uh, we felt that it was about agendas. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, there's there's our agenda that we we want to get done, but then there's also the Lord's agenda. And sometimes we'll fight so much just to to do it our way. You know that song, you know. I get it my yeah, way, but we'll try way. so hard, you know, mm -hmm. to do that. I guess one one good example, brother, is like you know sometimes we'll try to get a, a set list done, you mm -hmm. know. And some of you worship leaders out there, you know, you try so hard, you know, you're gonna, you know, your uh, your church may tell you, well, you only have 30 minutes to do a song or whatever, or 15 minutes or whatever. And then you have to have these songs ready, you know, and so you pick these songs and you try so hard. And your band was practicing these songs, and, and you try so hard just to play that song, and and it's not working out, or or like you know you're playing your instrument and it's not quite hitting the right place, and you feel like there's a fight, 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 fight through that whole thing. Well, you know, I think sometimes uh, maybe we need to step back and look and and think, well, maybe that wasn't God what what He wanted to do. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe he just wanted you to to just uh, uh, seek him mm -hmm. and pray, or play a different song. Maybe mm -hmm. you know, sometimes maybe it could be the Lord wants you to go over them thirty minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, or sometimes you know, and I sense that there's like I guess a fight. Mm -hmm. and stuff. I don't know, no, I think that you're right on. <laughs> well, one of the things I can think of when I was married. I remember that, you know, I'd be working all week, and so would my ex, too. She'd be working, too. But when Saturday rolled around, mm -hmm. it's like we had a new list, you know, mm -hmm. and I didn't want any list after the Saturday. I wanted mm -hmm. to rest. Mm -hmm. But things were, you know, we had kids, and they, they helped clean up the, the place and stuff. But what happened towards the end of the weekend, there'd be all kinds of extra mm -hmm. things to do. Amen. And, you know, sometimes the uh, certain people wouldn't want to go to church on Sunday because they had other things to do, other agendas. Mm. But what I'm trying to say, I'm not blaming anybody or blaming my ex or anything like that. What I'm saying is we start putting all these agendas that we want, mm -hmm. and we don't, we say, well, this is what we need to do. I need to do, I need to clean the house. I need to, to pick the weeds. I need to uh, fix up the lawns. I need to water the lawns. I need to do the landscape. All this stuff. But is that what you really need to do? Mm. Mm. What, you know, one thing the Lord has shown me through the years is that He says, commit it unto me. Whenever you have something in your life, like you have, let's say you, just, like, you, know, you have a, a wife or a husband, and they want you to do these things on the week, weekend. Well, during that week, you know, you know it's coming up. Say, Lord, could you help me out this weekend mm. and show me the things that I need to do and let my, my ex or let my, my, my spouse pull back off of me and so I can do these things and then she'll be pleased about it or he'll be pleased and, and then we'll have peace in the house. Mm. But I think sometimes we have so many agendas that we think they're what the Lord wants and it's not what the Lord wanted in the first place. Mm. I think the first thing he wanted is for you to spend time with him, mm. for me to spend time with mm. him. That's right. And then he would, he says, first seek the kingdom of God. What's that mean? That means seek with him within you. He's in you. And the kingdom of God is in you. Mm. Seek him there. Do the things that he would want to do. And you know what? He'll make enough hours in a day for you where you'll be able to accomplish all those honeybees or all those agendas. Mm. That's the way he works. Mm. But you got to commit it to him.
That's, that's right. That's right. I mean, that's the only thing I can think right now. I, yeah. I just I just noticed that a lot of people, whether it's church organizations or whether it's a, a job, every, I know in a job you have to have, you know you have things to do and have agendas, but it gets to a point where somebody just it, it, they're so consumed with the agenda, it's like control. Mm. If they don't have that control, they're not empowering them. Mm. I think you had some kind of a scripture regarding that. Yeah, right? yeah, we we were praying about it, and and the Lord put us on this, and this is this is on BibleOrg.com, uh, and it talks about the the Lord's Supper and the completion agendas, completing mm. agendas. And one thing was kind of interesting was. It brought up about however this is the importance of, of the Lord's uh, Supper, but it was talking about the part I want you to look at is which was kind of neat is is about Satan's agenda, mm -hmm. and it said uh, number one um, it said that Satan's agenda is to dominate. That's that's number one. Basically, control. Right? Yeah, okay. control. Yeah, it mm -hmm. said it says to dominate. Um, so it says, I'll read it to you. It says that Satan's agenda is to dominate, as we see in the life of Judas. Uh, Satan works to dominate, to keep them from coming under the saving power and the authority and control the life of, um, of the Lord Jesus. Can we yeah. stop there for a second? Yeah, go ahead, uh, brother. When you brought up control... Hmm. What kind of control was going on in your life? Mm. Who's controlling you? Mm. Are you controlled by your appetite? Mm. Are you controlled by what somebody thinks of you? Are you and what I mean by that, are you controlled by, well, I better not do this because they'll think badly of me. Mm. Are you guilty of that? Do you feel guilty when you do that? Or when people say things about you? You know, we got to be careful about control because a lot of people, if we let people do what they want to do to us, they'll just do, they'll, they'll take over. Mm. And you can't let people do that. You've got to be able to stand your ground and say, hey, well, you know, this is my yes, I say yes, and my no, this is my no. You've got to stand up for yourself, because if you don't stand up for yourself, people just do whatever they want to do. Mm. And, then you're, and then what? You'll be angry later on, and you'll be sad and angry. You'll be more angry at the person for you at yourself for letting them do that to you. Right. Don't let somebody rob your day or what you're doing. Don't mm. let them rob your, your your peace. And I think this goes back to Satan. That's what he likes to do. He puts division mm -hmm. between That's that right. person that you think is an authority or tells you this or that, and you start thinking, well, that person's terrible. That person did me wrong. He wants to put division there because if That's he can right. put division there, right. he can knock both of you down. That's right. That's right. That's right. So the whole thing is, is I guess the first one is dominate. Mm. And, uh, you know, um, we got to watch in ourselves, I guess, you know, if we want to dominate the circumstance, you know. And, uh, you know, you know what I like, brother? Mm. Uh, I remember one time we were doing a a worship thing and we were pressed in time of you know 30 minutes you can do only 30 minutes so and then other people kept saying well you know i want to do this song we should do this song no we shouldn't do that song maybe we should do this song mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh we were doing a sound check and then somebody would come up and and tell us you know that oh you know you're too loud and all this thing just doing a sound check and stuff. Mm -hmm. so all this attention happening and i remember brother we were Praying, you know, say, ah, forget it, you know, and, mm -hmm. and we had some sound problems with those of you musicians or whatever, worship leaders, and we had some sound problems with the system, and it never really had a major sound problem like that. And it was just very, very, uh, um, I would say, very um, stressful mm -hmm. sort of circumstance. And um, <clears throat> And uh, so what we did was that okay, let's pray. And so I remember praying. I remember mm -hmm. we prayed, mm -hmm. and then, and we were filled and we felt comfortable. And then we went up there. And then the sound was taken care of right away. Mm -hmm. And we played, and it was very powerful. The the whole thing worked really good. And it was one of the best uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, worship we did. It was one of yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that. yeah. And I I think I think what it is, brother, like you said, uh, you know, the first thing what we need to do is we need to 
pray. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of a lot of times, you know, like uh, maybe in the church or your church, or you know, you you get there like you have to play there at nine o'clock, and and you know you you uh you know you get there about you know nine fifteen or or something happens and you don't have time to pray and you just mm-hmm. go wing it bang mm-hmm. and, and it causes a lot of strife. But then um. The whole thing is we need to take that time to, to pray and then hear from Him. And I think that's what the, what the Scripture says. Seek Him early, right? Mm-hmm. Seek Him early before you go to work or do mm-hmm. anything. And I think there's a, a Scripture that talks about that, you know, from the person who's seeking Him early in the morning. And I mm-hmm. think I think some of you people who, who uh, you know, work at your jobs, it's, it's good to pray in the morning, pray in the afternoon, and then pray at night. You know, so when you're praying in the morning before you go to your job, pray pray in the afternoon and your lunchtime, have that time with the Lord, and then praying at night. You know, these three things. And, and, there, and when you pray, it is, you don't have to put a big long list of words. Yeah. I mean, don't don't get caught in that trap where you have to have a big long like a laundry list of words to tell the Lord. Mm. First of all, the Lord knows your heart. If you just say, if you just tell the Lord, here's my heart. You know what's on my heart. Can you please take over this day? Because I don't have a clue how I'm going to do this. Uh, I just need some help. Mm. I mean, right there is a good enough for the Lord just to step in because you're turning it over to Him. Mm. And that's what He wanted you to do in the first place. Mm. And I would, you know, I would just throw an extra thing in there. Just say, I ask for your will mm. for my day. Mm. And then it, 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 sometimes it, it may become against you, or you, maybe you've got a ticket or something like that happens. But that I don't, you know, I don't know if that's God's will or not. But if that happens, you still thank God through that. But He may be working things that you don't even know about. I know sometimes the Lord does that. He, he molds us a certain way where He's trying to fit His perfect will in it, even though we don't understand what's going on. That's right. But I, you know, funny, I, I'm gonna throw a little secret at you that I do in the morning. I don't do I, I should do it all more often, but I've been doing it lately. I say to myself or whoever I'm around, I go, I pour the blood of Jesus mm. on me or whoever is with me or whatever, or my situation. Because usually when you pour that blood of Jesus on me, there's like a protection you need. Mm. There's like a protection you need. Mm. You might want to use that to, to help start out. I pour the mm. blood of Jesus over yeah. myself and my car and my family. And my boss, you know, oh. maybe he's pissed off at you for not getting enough oh. deals or something. But she said, put the blood of Jesus on him. Oh. And then, like, protect him from oh. him saying things to you or hurting oh. you or saying something he shouldn't say. And might make his day even better for him, which mm-hmm. in turn might be good for you and might treat you better. Oh. You just say, I pour the blood of Jesus. Yes, you pour the blood of Jesus. On, on your circumstance, whatever it is, oh. your, your business or your. Oh. your Whatever you're going through, mm. do that in the morning. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it just it just it just showed me that um, again we were talking about our agendas and the Lord's agenda. Mm. And I think I think in the morning definitely you need to pray. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't care. I don't care. Uh, you just have to mm. because what's going to happen is is it says right there Satan comes to dominate, and he even used. The disciples he used Judas, mm-hmm. Judas, yeah. you know, in the church, mm-hmm. and and he can use that in the family too, just to separate mm-hmm. the the husband and the wife. That's right. Yeah, cause cause that. And we'll talk. I think there's something in there that talks about it, but mm-hmm. but the Lord's agenda is always to pray, to seek Him first. And I think, you know, what made the worship really nice was that we prayed, mm-hmm. and you were right. We should have prayed. You know, you, you, you get in a habit schedule, you know, got to be on time, got to be da da da, you want to have da da da, but you don't pray to get it. You know, it's so oh. easy to get caught up in your own agenda. But yeah. The Lord said, hey, you want this to work out right? Well, put it, let me just spend some time with me regarding us. Include me. Yeah. The Holy Spirit wants to be included in whatever you're doing. Oh. Whether yes. it's doing worship, whether mm-hmm. it's going to work and, and doing a big job that you have to do or getting out a certain job that needs to be done. Or spending time with your kids or your your spouse or whatever you're going through, the Lord says, I, the Holy Spirit, says, I want to be a part of that. Oh. If you acknowledge me, it's going to go better for you. 
Yeah. If you put it in, in the Lord's hands and acknowledge the Holy Spirit to help you out, it'll work for you. But yeah. if you don't, you're going to run into all kinds of obstacles because what you said is, said, you know what, I don't need really need you right now. I'll get to you later. So as soon as, as, soon as that happens, then Satan hears that. Wow. And wow. he steps wow. in and wow. he says, all right, I got freedom. Mm. I got freedom to do mm. what I want to do in that person's life. Wow. So they didn't even pray about it. Wow. So I can wreak havoc on them. Yeah. Okay. And then you do get havoc. And you wonder, what the heck's going on? Mm. What mm. you need to do the next morning you wake up, you, you ask the Holy Spirit to take over and pour the blood of Jesus over the situation. Yeah. Then go through the day. Wow. Wow. That's, that's good. That's feeding me right now. That's okay. feeding me too. Oh, that's wow. what I'm saying too. Wow. 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 So, so the first one, the thing... That the enemy Satan does is his agenda. Satan's mm. agenda is number one is to dominate. Mm. So remember that. Mm. You remember, remember who's dominating what. That's Are right. you dominating? Or somebody dominating you? Yeah. Or is it you know the Lord's dominating? Mm. If the Lord's mm. dominating, that's good. That's what we want because mm. He knows. Well, one one neat one neat thing about the Lord is. He, he does it so subtle. Yeah, he does it so subtle. But remember yeah. one thing: the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. Yeah. The Holy Spirit will never push himself oh. on you. He'll be there waiting for you. Yeah. And he'll be standing by like a like a tight friend. Oh. He'll be right there with you. Oh. But he won't force himself on you. That's right. But you call him, he'll jump up and say, "What do you need? Oh. What's happening? Oh. What can we do here?" Oh. It's like a parent and a son, or a parent and a daughter, and a son, uh, father and, and son, that kind oh. of thing. Oh, if, if your son comes up to you and you're a good dad and you, you have a good, you know, decent son and stuff, and he comes to you, Dad, I need help. Well, you're going to help him. You're not going to just live and leave him stranded. Well, it's the same thing with the Holy Spirit. If you ask him for a question yeah. during the day, he looks at you, he listens to you, and says, well, what, do you what do we need here? Pray to, mm-hmm. pray to the Lord and let's move on. With it. Yeah. You know, I was looking, uh, we have this picture right in front of us of mm-hmm. Moses and the mm-hmm. burning bush. And mm-hmm. I, I think of Moses like... Um, Here's a here's a guy who gets raised up as the king, you know, mm-hmm. like not well. He's in the, he's in the royal priesthood or mm-hmm. with with Egypt, and so he's in the higher ups, you know, like like you know someone like the president or king or whatever. But mm-hmm. it's in someone in authority. And <clears throat> so he gets in this thing, uh, and and uh, he sees unrighteousness or something going on there, so he tries to do it himself. Mm-hmm. And then he gets in trouble, so he leaves. And then he wanders 40 days in the desert. Mm. And so it seems like it, you kind of look at it, and, and I think of <clears throat> like everything had to be empty out of his hands mm. in order for the Lord to use him. You know? Mm. And it's the same thing with um, Job. Yeah, Job. Job. Job, yeah. He was very wealthy. Right? He, he, had he, he had everything. He had everything. That dude had everything. Yeah. So everything had to be stripped out of him mm. to be used. And just like Gideon, remember the story mm-hmm. of Gideon? He appeared to him and Gideon goes, you know, how could I do this? I'm, I'm a failure. You know, mm. I don't know anything about this stuff. Mm. You know, and then he says this. And, and so he used a man who, you know, didn't have any skill. It was just the mm. Lord, you know. Mm. And, and, you know, the Lord... What's cool is that the Lord will put you in a job or a circumstance mm-hmm. where, where you have no no ability to do that, mm-hmm. but then He'll. Oh, the Lord's been doing that many times in my life. Oh, oh. He's always done that. I mean, well, I don't yeah. know what I'm doing. Yeah, well, you just keep praying to me and you keep yeah. coming to me and I'll show yeah. you how to do it. You'll learn quickly. That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, number, number, should we go to number two? Yeah, let's go to <laughs> Okay, the number two. Uh, <laughs> Number two here is Satan's uh, agenda is to delude. Uh, as seen in the life of Judah, Satan worked overtime to delude the people into uh, substitute of life means in substituting, substituting the world. And it says uh, delusion that is they can find happiness and security in things like wealth, position, power. Mm-hmm. You hear that? It's security in things like wealth, position, and power. And then um, um, 
Judas was seeking his security in material wealth. That was the part. So we look at part of uh, the next agenda is deluding, is deluding, making what 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 are your security? Mm. You know, are you secured in your job? Are you secured in, in um, the position you have? Mm. Some of you are like a pastor. You know, I heard a, a story, brother. And this is a true story of a, a, a Baptist pu uh, preacher. And um, what happened was, um, the story goes that he was invited, and he was a well-known Baptist preacher, and uh, a lot of people was giving him money and, and uh, his ministry or whatever. So he was, he was he had a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And and uh, a lot of uh, people know who he was. So he had authority, basically. And uh, he went into this uh, revival meeting, Holy Ghost meeting, or whatever. And then everybody felt over, and, and they were full of the Spirit. And all of a sudden, he was feeling something. And then he was like, oh, shoot, what's that? And then he um, he started thinking about his 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 um, what would what would happen if they found out about me doing this stuff. What's going to happen with my money, my ministry, mm -hmm. of, of position that I'm doing it? What would happen to me if I did that, if, if they found out of, of what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. And so he slowly stood back out of that meeting while everybody was flowing in there. And so he went on, on and on. And then it said about a year later, he became very ill, very sick. And... Uh, the story goes on that he went to every doctor. They couldn't figure out what was wrong. And he was spending major, major money on doctors trying to figure out this illness. And finally what happened was that this guy was basically paralyzed. You know, oh. he was paralyzed. And he couldn't do anything at all. And uh, all he could do was, was be in bed and someone had to feed him a tube and stuff like that. So then, uh, then a boy came up to him. It says a boy, and he didn't really, you know, he was, he was uh, barely knew how to read. Mm -hmm. And I uh, read this um, verse to the, the man who was ill mm -hmm. and said, you know, why don't you just let the Lord heal you? And he mm -hmm. goes, what? Let the Lord heal you. He mm -hmm. says, what are you talking about? <laughs> and he gave a verse of uh, Isaiah 53. It says, by his stripes you're healed. Mm -hmm. And he goes, where would you hear that? He says, oh, I heard it from my pastor. He's talking to me that the Lord Jesus still heals and all this stuff. And he says, well, well, take me to your pastor. Yeah, so he, you know, because he went to every doctor and all this yeah. stuff. But then he realized, he realized the Lord brought him to that attention. He says, remember that time when when I was going to fill you with your spirit and, and you were thinking about your your security, mm. your money, and what would people think about you, your mm. position? Mm. And then he remembered and goes, oh, Lord, forgive me for that. Mm. Forgive me for that. And then, um, <clears throat> you know, long story short, he repented. Mm. And he was going to die. Basically, the doctor said, you're going to die. You know? mm. and, uh, and so he prayed and he asked God for forgiveness. And Well, the story ended up, so his mom, his mom was there, you know, and he could not eat. And, it, and the mom, um, he said, he says, Mom, uh, just, 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 you know, fix me the best meal tonight. Mm. You know, the biscuits and da 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 and all the stuff. Mm. So, and <clears throat> and it, and his mom said, Well, you know, I'm just gonna give him what he wants. You know, you know, I mean, uh, if this if this will make him happy, and you know, if, it, if he dies happy, that'd be happy for me. Mm. And so he ate and stuff like that. And he was fine, and the, and the guy started getting more strength and more strength mm. and more strength, more strength. And the Lord basically told him to heal him. Mm. And the Lord, my, my, um, the Lord reminded him about that. Yeah, but I think what it really comes down to is this: how much do we really trust God? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How much do we really trust Him to take over our day when we pray to Him each morning? Do we trust Him? Do we trust Him? To the point where we can say, you know, I trust, I trust you in this day. I mean, it doesn't mean that I'm not going to go do my work or do what I need to do, but I'm going to put these things before you. 
Mm. And I'm going to ask you to, to, to okay my, my list in my life. Mm. And whatever the, that you don't okay, just kind of just slide it out away from me. So I don't have to worry about it. It doesn't mean and that it'll be taken care of and it's time for you. I'm trusting you to take mm. care of it for me. Yeah. Oh, I think what the Lord's just showing me right now once my brother was talking. I want the, the Lord's telling me to tell everybody like this. Yes. I want you to trust me more. Yes. You're, you're trusting in too yes. many things. Yes. You have too many agendas going. And all you have to be concerned is about is my agenda. And my agenda, oh. number one, and it's the only thing I want from you, is to worship me. Oh, to spend yes. time with me. Yeah. Oh. When you spend time with me, that's a way of worshiping you. Oh. When you talk, when you oh. talk and say sweet she things about you, yes, you're spending Lord. time with me. You're calling me close to you, and I want to oh. be close to you. I want to be intimate with you. That's what I long for. Hmm. Don't put any more agendas in front of me anymore. Oh. If you want things to work out right for you, oh. this is the Lord telling me to tell yeah. you that. If you want things work to work out right for you, then get rid of your oh. agenda oh. and follow and worship me in the morning. Mm. Worship me. Mm. Yeah. Put me first. Certain, he says, seek the first the kingdom of God yeah, and all, all things. Yeah. Oh. So the desires of your heart that you oh. really want oh. yeah. will come to pass. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Thank you. you know, you're saying about seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added mm -hmm. to you. You know, he put that with that, that verse where he says, mm -hmm. ask and it shall be given. Yeah, that's seek right. and you shall find it. He was right. talking about that. Remember, he was talking about. If your father uh, gives you uh, da -da -da, how much more yes, would your so. father? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about basically your needs, your mm -hmm. financial needs, your physical needs, your security, basically. Mm -hmm. That's what he was talking about. And, 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 and this is, I'm, the Lord just showed me there's a lady oh, out there right oh. now, you know, uh, <laughs> somewhere back east in, in, in mm -hmm. Florida. And he says, you're really concerned about what's going on in your life, and you, you don't see security. You're looking at your husband right now, and he's not providing like you want him oh, to provide. Yeah. Well, the Lord says, you haven't trusted in me to take care of you. You haven't put your husband in my hand. You haven't poured the blood of Jesus on him each one. You haven't prayed for your husband oh. to be in my care. Oh. And the Lord wants you to start putting your husband under the the glory of God and under the blood of Jesus each morning. If you're so sick, so, you're so concerned about your security, that's what you need to do right now. Oh. Then the Lord will take care of your security. Oh, yeah. He says he'll speak to your husband and he'll make plans and he'll he says I'll make plans for him and I'll make things for him, but he'll make some money and he'll take care of you. Oh, but yeah. that's not all about life. He want he says the Lord also said he wants you to listen to your he wants you to listen to what he talks about. Oh. Him. Oh, because oh. I've anointed your husband right now. Oh. But you got to let up a little bit. Oh. Yeah. You got to let, let me move in his life. You got to pray for your husband. Oh. Don't don't bad fight him or bad mouth him or talk oh, to your friends yes. about him. Pray for him. Yeah. And you'll see results. Thank you. Mm. You know, the Lord was just showing me, brother, when you were speaking that. Um, <clears throat> you know, somebody out there, you know, you, you uh, lost your job, mm. and you thought it was the perfect job and everything, mm. and, and maybe you might have prayed about that job, and you got that job, and you're doing good, you're making some good money, and then all of a sudden, it's gone like mm. that. And you're going, what the heck happened? Did I do something wrong? Or, mm. or am I in sin? Or, mm. or what did I do? And the Lord was saying, you know, that I'm changing the circumstances. Yes. And what he's telling you to do is that you need to get before the cross and pray. And maybe you need to fast. And, you know, what I'm saying about fast, meaning that you need to just, you know, empty yourself out yes. from all that stuff so that mm. so it's not from you. And then just seek him and say, Lord, what is it your will? What, what are you trying to tell me? Mm. What is it you want? What is it you? What do you want? Where, where are you trying to put it? Put me in your perfect will. Mm. Put me in your perfect will. Mm. Because I'll tell you something. When there's a door that shuts, mm. there's always another door. There's another door. Mm. Now, it could be a wrong door. You could be 
all of a sudden, you know, panicking, and then all of a sudden you go and jump on any other job, and that, that causes another screw up in that. You, you know, brother, you know, oh. what I've noticed, and then we've okay. done this, we've done this with the webcast, we're going to be close mm. You know, we, we, we always just oh. strive to try to say, oh, well, how should we format this, or how should we do this on the mm. webcast? But once we started to pray and put it in God's hands, mm -hmm. we didn't have to strive anymore. That's right. And that's what's so beautiful that's about right. it. Um, we're telling you with things that we do today, oh, we trust in Him. When we do this webcast, we're trusting in Him yes. and the Holy Spirit yes. to bring it about. Yes. yes. So whatever we talk about, it's from the Holy Spirit. Oh. So we give praise and glory Thank to you, God Jesus. right now. Thank you, Jesus. But what we're trying oh. to show is you can do the same thing. Oh, yes. You can have the same results oh. in your life oh. if you put Him first. Oh, yes. You pray to the Holy Spirit. You've got to take this over. Because let me tell you, I'm really being honest right now. Me and my brother, when we come to do a telecast before you, oh. when we do a webcast before you, we pray before we do it. Oh, yeah. And we ask the Lord, what do you want to bring to the table here? What do you want to show the people out there? There's nothing that we thought up. Like, oh, we're going to do this, do that. No. We go to the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit. Mm. And then when we come on the air, it's like he comes right out of our mouth and starts speaking mm. what he wants to talk about. Mm. Sure, we may have some of them back. We have, like, we show you a scripture, mm. but from there on, it's like the Holy Spirit's moving the way it wants to. That's right. And that's when we give him freedom, mm. more than freedom. Mm. He deserves that. Mm. Mm. Oh, 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 that's right. Right. And I, mm. I felt, I felt like the spirit. Yeah, somebody out there. Yeah, mm. the Lord. And, and and you're wondering why this mm. thing happened. Just remember, you're in a situation. You got laid off, or mm. something happened mm. in your circumstance where the door just went bang. You know, and that's the time where you need to get to your faith mm. and pray and say, okay, what is the next chapter? Lord? What is your next chapter? You know, and uh, sometimes just maybe not want to do anything, just do that. Because you could be going into a wrong path, you know. Mm. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You know, sometimes maybe the Lord may, may want to cause you to move out of a yeah. certain place and then move into a new place. Could you, you read, a, could you read this? I don't have my glasses on. Okay, so I do read it. Which one? Can you read it? Which one? Can you Excuse me, people out there. I don't have my glasses on, so I can't oh, really know. Can you tell us what it says? This is coming. Right here. Here. Okay, it says, Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he did for me. Oh. oh. Well, I cried out to him for help, praising him as I spoke. And if I had confessed my sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. Mm. Whoa, I like that. That's what the Lord wants you. He wants you to confess oh. what's on your heart right now. Oh. He's going to help you out, but you got to confess oh. it to him. And it says, but God did listen. He <laughs> paid attention to my prayer. Amen. Praise God, who did not ignore my prayer and withheld the unfailing love for me. Whoa. What I want you to understand, oh, people, when, oh. we, when I read this, I, before the, the, the webcast, I just opened it up like that. And I started looking at it, I go, oh, it's, well, what does this mean? But you, I, I want you to understand what we're talking about, the Holy oh. Spirit understood. Yeah. He wanted to get his message out to you. That's right. So oh. that message out for you right there, is, if you got something on your heart, you got a, a grievance towards a spouse, a brother, business partner, Boss, you need to go to the Lord and say, Lord, I have forgiveness. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I release that person. Oh. oh. Lord says, if you can't forgive your brother, I can't forgive you. Oh, yeah. So release him. Just, you know, it's yeah. no big deal. Yeah. I mean, you don't yeah. have to go over there. You don't yeah. have to go to your brother and tell him, if you want to do that, that's cool. You can tell me, I'll ask you, I want to ask your forgiveness. But if you, you can go to the Lord right now and say, Lord, I truly forgive this person. Oh, thank you, Lord. When you do that, the Lord erases it and He listens to you. Yeah. Okay, now what is your problem? Oh. Well, what's your problem, God? Let's, let's take care of it. Oh. oh. What's the kind of daddy we have? Oh. oh. 
He just wants you to acknowledge it's on your heart. He already knows it's on your heart. He's waiting for you to say something or confess it. That's right. He already knows it's there. That's right. All you do is say, I, I ask forgiveness. And he wipes it clean. Mm. But you say, well, how can I get it clean? Well, by the blood of Jesus. When he died on the cross, That's it right. made it clean. Oh. Nothing oh. you could do to make it clean. But Jesus right. did it for you. That's right. Oh. Yeah. By the way, that's, that's uh, in Psalm 66, mm -hmm. verse 16 and, and 20. So, mm -hmm. so just if you want to check that out. Yeah, that's the first a lot of people out there. Like, what, Psomes 16? Yeah, Psalm, Psalm 66. 66. 66, verse 16 and 20. Okay, so that's where there's so, a lot of people out there that are, that are... So why is God not answering my prayer? Oh. Well, that's oh, why. That's why. You've got to confess it. That's right. It's over on your heart. That's right. I don't care what it is. Whoa. Just confess it. Whoa. Whoa. God's not a, he's not going to strike you down. He's going to listen to what you say. It's about time you told me. Now I can bless you. Whoa. You know, that, that's one <laughs> thing. How, my God. That's one thing about how, how the enemy <sighs> puts that. Too. That's right. That's part of Satan's agenda, um, agenda too. That's right. Is that when you know he'll do that with with a family too, mm -hmm. especially in the family. You know, I tell you something, Jeez. folks. One, if you're married out there, just remember. And I'm speaking to all the other born again, all the Christians out there. If you're married out there, I tell you one thing: the devil does not want you married. Mm -hmm. He doesn't. No, nope, he doesn't. And he'll try everything just to divide that thing. Divide that thing. And I can attest to that because I went oh. through that. Oh. I went through oh. that when I was married for 21 years. Oh. And my ex left me. Mm. Mm. But I tell you something, though. If you just put God's agenda, no matter what hell comes through, He'll bless you through the storm into the next chapter, whatever it is. If, if, you're, if you're married and, and something happened where... Where you divorce now, the Lord will, is going to bless you no matter That's right. what. That's right. No matter what. Right. But then some of you people who are married now, you know, you need to pray. And then sometimes the Lord just wants you to to, to fight and pray. Yeah. You know, if, if you if you are on the verge of getting the divorce, this is what my priorities were before I before I got divorced. Number one. Was my children. Mm. Number two was my business. I mean, number three was my ex, and number four was God. And the Lord says, "Turn that upside down, Paul." Number four was being. Now it is God's first. If I had a wife, she'd be second. Third, my kids, my business life. Cool. You got to rearrange your priorities. It's God first, mm. no matter what. You know why? Because He gave you everything you have. That's your right. wife, your kids, your job, your study, That's your right. house, your car, your clothes, your health, everything. Mm. That's right. That's right. Now I know He is number one. Yeah. What you got to do is you got to put the Lord first each morning when you wake up. No matter what. Oh, 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 oh. Shoot. You know, the next next thing I think also was with pride. Mm -hmm. With the disciples, you know, because he'll, he'll come to that and then he'll, he'll bring pride to you too. I mean, there'll be a point where maybe your business is doing really mm. good now, or your ministry is doing really good. All the, the numbers and all the people are coming up, and, and God is blessing you and, and mm. bringing you up. And, and you got to be careful right there not to have pride. And that's what happened with, with the disciples. They were, they, were, they were fighting, and they were saying, who, you know, who gets to sit in the right hand and the left mm. hand? You know, it's like, come on, what kind of crap is that? You know, mm. who gets to sit in the, 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 you know, like the throne with Jesus, you know? Or it, could be, or it could be in the church, you know? Mm. You, you can say, man, 
who who could play the the best slot? You know, mm-hmm. from the seven o'clock to, to you know to the mm-hmm. nine o'clock slot. You know, or the eight o'clock to ten o'clock mm-hmm. slot. You know, the headlining slot. Mm-hmm. I want to play the headlining slot. Mm-hmm. I don't want to play the five or the three in the morning slot. I want to play the headlining slot. Mm-hmm. I, you know, we can get to that. But I tell you something: when you get to that point, and you start thinking that that, you know, I. I, I should be this way. You got to be careful because that's where the fall comes. Mm. And Satan would love to see you fall, right? He loves to deceive you. Yeah. He loves to deceive you. Mm. Oh. And how do you, how do you stop oh. him from deceiving you? That's why you get up early in that morning. You yeah. tell the Lord, before the blood Break off that pride. Break off that Well, you got to protect me because I can't do it by myself. Oh, oh. So what, brother? Do we have any more things? We thought the first one we had was yes. what now? Was the first one was was um, looking at this thing here. The first one was dominate. Okay. Satan wants to dominate. Like I want to take control. Okay. And then the second one was to delude. Mm. Meaning, you know, like get you like secured into. Think you have everything. Yeah. You've done it all by yourself. Right. Exactly. Your wealth, your position, mm-hmm. your power. You know. Having that statue, and third is is um, Satan is to destroy, mm. and uh, basically you know he'll do everything just to kill this person down, bring him down, bring mm. him down, Lord, mm. kill him, Lord, you know, bring him down. I mean, some people pray that crap, mm. you know. And then the the fourth thing is to distract and divide, uh, meaning that uh, who's who's the greatest and stuff like that. Whose agenda is that? You know, the focus that I'm the one to do. He does that at home. He does oh, that at yes, church. He does, he does yeah. it at the business. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So we've given you keys so far how you can stop that from happening. Oh. What you choose to do with them is mm. up to you. That's right. That's right. And you don't want to be you don't want to be so messed up on that because then then you know you you get in the more rebelling state, you know, then that becomes like farther off the road, you know, where mm-hmm. you, you know, you'll pray and then you won't hear from God. That's right. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's good. I got a story to tell That's about. Right. Right. Yeah. I heard a, a story of a pastor. Now, this is a true story of a pastor, and he was saying that the Lord, this is a someone well known guy, I'm not going to mention the name, you know, but, but I remember he said this. He said, he said, the Lord told me to do something, and then I procrastinated. Mm. And I put it off, 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 put it off. Mm. And finally, I didn't do it. And then the Lord said, uh, it got to a point where the Lord didn't speak to him anymore. And you can be in that situation where, where you're, you you know, when you want to hear from the Lord, and all of a sudden you can't hear from the Lord anymore because you just procrastinated. And yes, you can be in that circumstance where you prayed and prayed and the Lord tells you. The Lord tells you something. And then you can't hear anymore. Mm-hmm. And that's what happened to this person. And then later on, he realized that. He repented and he prayed and he said, God, please, please. And mm-hmm. God began. Mm-hmm. And then he started hearing again. And and the whole thing was that he said, Mama did not make made me a fool to realize I I screwed up once, but I'm not gonna screw up again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he learned. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's all we can do for tonight. Yes. We're a little tired here, so we thank you for yes, uh, joining us. Yes, yes, yes. And we just uh, say send us the e- yes. uh, the voicemails, yes. the emails, yes, whatever, definitely. and uh, let us know what's happening. Yes. Let us pray for us. Yes. Let us pray for you. Yes. So we just bless, bless you. you. We bless, bless you. you. We, we bless, bless you. you. Hallelujah.